gonna get started in a second. Brother Yuan, this brother I come. All right, we're here in Raleigh, man. We're about to bring out the word. So first and foremost, I want to say, we we'll give all praise to the Most High. Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh Shah, by Shem, Kadash. All right, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. All right, I want to say shalom to all the brothers who are pushing this truth and sincerity. May the blessing of election be upon your house. All right, our brother got a picture of the twelve tribe sign because. You know, we out here to speak to our people. You can hold it up to the camera, brother. We out here to speak to uh, our people, you know? So you got the, uh, I don't know if you can see it that well. And if, if anything, I'll probably put a picture on it later and post so y'all can see it. But you got the tribe of Judah, which would be the, the so-called Negroes, all right? You got the tribe of Benjamin, which would be like the West Indians, all right? You got the tribe of Levi, which would be the Haitians. You got the tribe of Simeon, which is the Dominicans, Zebulon. The Guatemalans, the Panamanians, Ephraim, the Puerto Ricans, Manasseh, the Cubans, Gad, the Native Americans, Reuben, the Seminole Indians. You got Naphtali, which is the Argentinians to the Chileans. All right. You got Asher, which is the Colombians to the Uruguayans. And you got Issachar, which is the so-called Mexicans. Right. And of course, you got the Israelites scattered into all the nations abroad because we went into multiple captivities. You know what I mean? We just, this, this is the only captivity that we went into. You know what I mean? So um, our first precept I want to go to is Revelation 10 and 9. Okay. This is Revelation <laughs> chapter 10, verse 9. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. That little book is the understanding of the scriptures. This is this, the Holy Bible, man. The understanding of the scriptures. So today, man, we're going to talk about the cost of admission. You know, you want to make it into the kingdom. There's certain things and trials and tribulations that you don't go through here on this side. All right? Go ahead, brother. It reads on. And it shall make thy belly bitter. So when you first get digest this thing, there's dark sands in this thing. There's things that you find out that you're going to have to go through. You have to find out that you've been lied to. You have to find out that the predicament that you're in is because of your own people's disobedience. That you're going to have to go through tough times. That you're going to be tried in the furnace of adversity. Like the Lord says, man, acceptable man, acceptable man are tried in the furnace of adversity. So when you're digesting all of these things, you're digesting the fact that some of your loved ones aren't gonna make it, some of your loved ones are gonna be destroyed because they won't repent. That's something that you have to come to terms with when you find out the true understanding. If you got a precept, brother, feel free. That's something you have to come to terms with when you find out the true understanding of the scriptures. Because in the world, they like to make it seem like it's just all love and all happiness in this book. No, the Lord is balanced. There's also trials and tribulation and adversities that you must go through. Go ahead, brother. It reads on. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. You know, because you first digest, before you digest something, it goes in your mouth first. So when you first find out, oh, I'm royalty, I'm Israelite, I'm chosen, it's sweet in your mouth. You feel good, but when you start to digest it and get down to the nitty gritty of this thing, it's like, oh man, this is this is this is something that you have to work for. This is something you have to be diligent for. It's just it's not going to be handed to me. You know what I mean? Because we, we we Lord willing, we want to be a part of that elect. And there's there's certain certain things that come with that, man. You can't sit on your ass and be a part of the elect. You have to do the work. Go ahead, brother. Because you're talking about going through affliction and trials yeah, and all of that. Come. This is Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10. Behold. I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the furnace of affliction. You know what I mean? So that's something that, that's how the Most High is going to burn us of our impurities, man. I did a lesson uh, the other day. I said, the Lord will always have you go through certain things on a regular basis to keep you on point. To remind you that this isn't your rest. You know what I mean? So you, we're going to go through things. That's a part of the walk. You're going to catch hell when you come into the truth, right? You know? Uh, go back and uh, read that in Revelation uh, 10. Yeah. 
This is Revelation chapter 10, verse 9. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall be in thy belly bitter, uh -huh. but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Yeah, man. So keep going. Verse 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Yeah, man. So, yeah, it's going to make your belly bitter. You're going to realize and come to the understanding that, hey, man, this walk isn't the easiest walk. This is the harder way. Continue on. He's going to say something else that I want to go into. Go ahead. It reads on. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Okay. So he was telling this to John, man. So look. This, this is something that is for the long haul. John, what, what, he, he, he passed away. Right. right? So look, he had to come. He's, he's come back in his life, lifetime after lifetime, generation after generation, doing the same thing he was doing back then, preaching the word to his people, telling them to repent that the kingdom is at hand. Right? Um, I got uh, another precept I want to go to. Because, yeah, all that you go through, go to Philippians uh, 4 and 11 if you can um, I'm going to break down a true understanding of that As you're going through these afflictions There's a certain spirit that you're supposed to have on you Alright, so start at 11 This is Philippians chapter 4 verse 11 Not that I speak in respect of want But I have learned in whatsoever state I am Therewith to be content so, you know, a lot of people, they, they go read Philippians 4 and 13. And they say, oh, I can do all things that through Christ who strengthened me. That's not what this is talking about. Read that again, brother. This is Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of one. Not of wanting. Oh, I want to do this, so I want to do that. No, go ahead. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith. To be content. So whatsoever state that you're in, no matter if you're going through bad times or good times, to be content because we know the ending for us is salvation. That's what we know. That's what we're striving for. Keep going. It reads on. I know both how to be a abased, below abased, and I know how to be abound. Doing well, man. When the Lord is, you know, He got things going for you. Keep going. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed. Both to be full and to be hungry. Mm -hmm. Both to be both to abound and to suffer need. Yeah, man. So you when you come into this truth, you learn how to, to balance things out because the Lord is balanced. You know how to conduct yourself when things aren't going well. You know how to conduct yourself when things are going all right for you, man. You, you learn how to execute proper judgment. This is truly how you learn how to become a man. You're not gonna learn how to become a, a true man in this place. The Lord instructs us how to carry, carry ourselves, how to conduct ourselves, how to execute proper judgment, how to perceive things that are going on around you, man, through spiritual eyes. All right? Go to um, second, I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians 4, sorry, 16. And I'm going to read the. So lock in. It's, um, 2 Corinthians 4 and 16, all right? It reads, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. How is your inward man renewed, man? Because, because you're hearkening unto this. You're hearkening to the instructions of the Most High. This rebuilds you. You know, the scriptures also say, and you can get it from me, brother, wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of thy times. This, this is what's going to allow you to endure it at those horrible times that are coming because we know like it says in Matthew the 24th chapter the time that's coming upon the earth is going to be like like another any other time that ever happened it's going to be worse than any other time that's ever taken place in documented history or undocumented history man. Ready for it? Yep, yep. this is Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6 and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time time man so what's the wisdom and knowledge that you're looking for? Not the wisdom and knowledge of the world, right. because the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God, right? 
So you need to find a wisdom understanding of the scriptures, man. This is where this is how you build yourself up spiritually. You don't build yourself up spiritually by going to tap dancing in the church and rolling on the floor. That ain't that ain't helping you. You know what I mean? That ain't how you go grow spiritually. And not only are, are you gotta get the understanding, man, you gotta be a doer of the word. You gotta live it. You gotta walk the walk. You understand? Go ahead, read that again, brother. This is Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Yeah, man. That's that's what's gonna keep you afloat. That's what gives you balance. That's what we're learning, man. You have to learn balance when you're coming to this thing. Let's go look at an example of balance. Go to Job, the second chapter. Job, the second chapter. This is Job, chapter 2. Chapter one. Verse, uh, start at verse 9. We only get straight to the point. So everybody knows the story of Job. Job was tested by the Most High. And he, who did he use to do it? He used the spiritual entity, the angel Satan. Because what? Satan works for the Most High. You know, most people, they don't, they don't grasp that. In the world, when something bad happens, they say, oh, that's, that ain't nothing but the devil. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, what does the scripture say? Should there, should there be evil in the city and the Lord yeah, hath not done it? That's right. You know what I mean? Go ahead, brother. This is Job chapter 2, verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, does thou still retain thy integrity? So Job was being tested. He was going through all this affliction. And his wife came to him. She said, do you still retain your integrity? Are you still down with the most high? Even though he's putting you through all, all this hell? Even though he's testing you this way? Are you still down with him? Go ahead, brother. It reads on. Curse the most high and die. So yeah. <laughs> she had spirits on him, man. She told, she told Job to curse, to curse the most high and die, man. And what did Job say? This is an example of how you're supposed to walk. Even though Job had lost everything, man, to the world, in the world's eyes, it looked like Job was on the losing side. We talked about that in the car on the way up again. But what did Job say? Job, Job, he was spiritually built up. He was spiritually equipped to go through whatever. All right, go ahead, brother. Verse 10, but he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women. Yep. Yeah. He said, thou speakest one of the foolish women speak. But people look at us, you know, they say, oh, you got you got some bombs, you need to da-da-da-da. What do we say to them? Oh, man, y'all y'all out the loop. You don't know what's going on. You're going you gonna to be destroyed if you don't repent. Right. They looking at us crazy, and we looking at them crazy. Our face is harder against, against their faces. Right. Because we have the understanding of the spirit. We see it with our spiritual eyes and not our carnal ones, man. You can't see shit with these. Go ahead. It says, this is Job chapter 2, verse 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Yep. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of the Most High? And shall we not receive evil? Uh -huh. The Lord is balanced. He said, what? Are we going to receive good from the Most High and not evil? What, where have you been? No, nah, she was in that spirit of... God is good all the time. Right. That's the spirit she was in, so she didn't understand that, that why the Lord was doing all that to Job. It was to try him. It showed that he was an acceptable man. The same way we're going to be tried. So this is this is a good reference for you to go back to, man, when you're going through tough times. Like, hold up. I'm built. I'm supposed to be built for this. Right. The Lord ain't going to put nothing on you that you can't go through. Right. Because we're getting ready to come into a time, man, where we're going to be afflicted. We're going to be tried. And it's not going to be the time to fold, man. You gotta be built up in this thing. This has to be what's in the first thing. This has to be what's in the forefront of your mind at all times, man. That's the only way you're gonna survive. All right, and, and, and another thing I wanna add on to that is that the Lord is balanced. He said that so we receive good from the, the hands of the Most High, not evil. You're gonna receive, you're gonna receive a, a dose of both because a, 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 a false balance is an um, abomination to the Most High. You know what I mean? Read that one more time so we receive good in the uh, most high not evil. This is Job chapter 2 verse 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of the most high? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did Job so I can, and all this did not Job sin with his lips. Yeah, go ahead, you know, Job didn't sin with his lips. 
you know. He went through his hard times, you know, and he, he, he kept the faith. I got a precept. This is uh, James 5 and verse 10. It says, Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. So, yeah, suffering is a part of the walk, man. It isn't all candy and roses. <laughs> We're going to have to go through adversity. We're going to have to go through affliction. That is part of our walk, man. we will read that again. Uh, James 5 and 10. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Endurance is a big thing, man. Right? Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of patience of Job. We just, we just, that's what we just left. All right? Ye have heard of the patience of Job. And ye have seen the end of the Lord. What did he do for Job in the end, man? He gave him twofold. But what did he say he's going to do for us? He said, those who have forsaken houses shall receive a hundredfold in the kingdom. <laughs> you know what I mean? This, this is what gives you faith to, to push on, man. Let me finish that up. Verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Give her the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy, man. So even though we're going through this affliction and we look like we go to Wisdom of Solomon, uh, you got your Bible? Yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah. Okay, you got this. Go ahead. All right. This is St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. You know, because like the brother Yohan is going into, when you come into this truth, you know, you're going to suffer. You know, you're going to go through some things. You know, so we got to endure. You know, when you look into that word endure, it means to make hard. You gotta be made hard, you know, to whatever come your way. So I'm gonna grab this precept. Mm, I got it. I got it. Go ahead, go ahead. This is St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. And this is red letter, so this is Lord Yahweh Shah speaking, who the word calls Jesus. This is St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That's right. So the only way you so-called Negroes, Latino, and the Americans are gonna be saved. In these upcoming times, you know, to get beaten up in those chariots with the word he calls UFOs, the only way you're going to be saved, unless you're made hard, unless you're door, you know, all the things that's going to come your way. You see, because we're coming into the times where, you know, you're going to have persecution coming. We're coming into the times where you're going to have race riots going on, martial law going on, feminine and approving thirst going on, you know, on pestilence, you know, which are the diseases, you know, Tifa wild beasts and so forth and so on. So you have to be made hard. You have to endure all these things that's going to come your way. And the ones who are going to endure all the stuff that's going to come their way, guess what? They're going to be saved. You know, they're going to get beaten up into those chariots. And that's the elect. Lord will be some of men. I got a precept uh, to back up what the brother is saying. Because we're, we're, we're like the, we're, we're, we're the ground troops for the Most High. You understand? So this is 2 Timothy 2 and verse 3. Okay? Max, actually, I'm going to start up. I'm going to just start at 1. 2 Timothy uh, 2 and 1. Thou therefore, my son... Be strong in the grace that is in Yahweh Shah Mashiach. And the things that thou hast heard of me, heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. And here's the point, verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness. Going to the brother when he was talking about, endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. So yeah, you gotta bear the cross on this thing, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta uh Gird up your loins, yep. like David told his son Solomon, man. Yep. And be a man. Go through the afflictions. You know what time it is. Yep. You know the things that the men of the Lord will do. This is a part of our walk. And the, and the heat is only going to go up from here. Right. You got a precept, brother? You call from Wisdom of Solomon. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter. Because it's to people, it, is, it appears that, man, what? We're on the loser's side. It even appears to them that we're the bad guys. But we're gonna we gonna go that we're gonna go into the fact that people see us as we're the losing side right now. But what are they gonna see us as in the day of the of Lord's return? Go ahead. Five verse one. Yep, start at the top. Yep. Five. This is wisdom of Solomon chapter five, verse one. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness. You know, this is one of my favorite precepts to go into. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness. The righteous men in this time are what? The men on the highways and byways. Following the commandments of the Most High, He told us to be out here and teach our people to blow the trumpet in the city, right? Tell the people to repent, man, because the day of the Lord is at hand. All the prophecies are coming to pass. We're talking about the prophecies and how they're all happening simultaneously at one time. 
scriptures, lining up with the scriptures. They can't be ignored. Those who the Lord chooses to get it are going to comprehend, and those who he doesn't, we know what time it is, man. Their blood's off our hands. Go ahead, brother. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the faith of such as afflicted him. Before our enemies, before the nation that took us into captivity, before the children of the prophet killers, of our people, the people that were killing the prophets. <laughs> Just like it talks about in Matthew, they, they say what? Oh, we wouldn't have killed the prophets if that we was back in our father's time. Nigga, it, it was you. It was, it was, you know, those are the same spirits. The same spirits that was killing the prophets were the same spirits that were saying, crucify him, crucify him. And it's going to be the same spirits that come up against us in this time. Go ahead, brother. It says, it made no account of his labors. People don't make any account of our labors. They think we out here just for not. They think we just out here to stir up a ruckus. No, we're out here doing what our father commanded. We're out here practicing our heritage. We're out here rehearsing the righteous acts. Go ahead. It reads on. When they see it, they shall be troubled. With, with terrible fear. What are they going to be afraid of? Go ahead. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. They'll be amazed when the sky is filled with chariots and the elect are being taken up out of the way of the destruction that's coming. And they're sitting there like, what about me? You, you telling me that God in the corner, in, in, the, in, the, in those dresses, that's what they call it, in those dresses, those were the chosen people of the Most High? That... that the people that I was spat on, the people I drove over their signs, the people I threw rocks that's at. That's right. The, you know, <laughs> you're telling me those are the people that the Lord was dealing with? Go ahead. It says, so far beyond all that they had looked for. Yeah, man, because the depiction they give in the world of what salvation is going to look like, like the Most High is going to come back and give everybody a hug. No, man, the Lord is, is uh, he's a master showman. The same way he, he was a master showman in uh, Egypt. And he brought all the plagues on Egypt yep. upon the people. And he did that great feat. The way he delivered uh, Israel out of Egypt. So that the whole, all the nations of the earth feared Israel. Because they knew that what? The Lord was dealing with this group of people. He's going to top that, man. He's going to top that. These people are going to... The same way the nations were in fear back then or the same way the nations are going to be in fear in this time when he delivers his people, man. Even more so. Go ahead, you got a precept? Okay, yeah. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometime in derision. This is he who we looked down on, man, who we thought was a fool. And they said they were repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit because what? They realized actually that they were on the wrong side. That it wasn't us that was on the wrong side. That they were. Alright? They said we fools are counting his life madness. But later on, I he didn't get to that, but that's what it's gonna say. Go ahead, brother. It says in a proverb of reproach. Uh -huh. Keep going. Yep. Verse 4. We fools accounted his life madness. We fool. Now they gonna come to the realization that they were the one that was foolish, mm -hmm. not the better the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because hey, we do look foolish out here teaching. Ain't nobody out here listening to the carnal eye to somebody that doesn't know. It would look like we're on the wrong side. That's no right. doubt, no doubt about it. <laughs> Even the Lord says uh, he uh, that he, he enjoys the foolishness of uh, preaching. Yep. You know what I mean? So we we do look out here like we we on the wrong side. That's right. You got the precept, brother, that you want? Yep. Go ahead. Um, let me finish this out real quick. Let's yeah, finish it. that out. It says, in his, in his end, to be without honor. They thought our end was going to be without honor. They didn't They didn't think the Lord would be no let go. Get us out of the way of all the destruction. That we were going to be able to hide in his chambers for a little moment while the indignation be overpassed. They didn't think that. Go ahead. This is Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 5. You got it. Yeah. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there have been a prophet among them. Yeah, they're going to realize that, oh, that lines up exactly with, see, all the men of the Lord say the same thing. That lines up exactly. They're going to realize that a prophet was among them when, the, when calamity hits. And those that forbear, man, hey, the Lord didn't choose for them to get it. 
no big deal. But everybody's gonna have the opportunity to repent. Let's believe that. Let me go get, yeah, because people don't understand how the Most High works, man. Let's go get that in John. If the Most High has to choose you, you don't choose the Most High, right? John, well, 14, 15. This is St. John, chapter 14. Maybe 15. Yeah, 15. Yeah, it's 15. 15 to 14. My father. Yeah, yeah. This is St. John, chapter 15, verse 16. Yeah. Ye have not chosen me, but have chosen you. Start up, actually. Start up at, uh, start up at, uh, 12, actually. John. This is St. John, chapter 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. The Lord loved us because he showed us how to conduct ourselves according to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Not to walk after our own lust. Not by giving us a hug, you know, tell, you know, being nice to us. Like, no. He showed us how to conduct ourselves so that we may receive everlasting life. Okay? See you on. It reads on. Greater love. It smelled like pork when they walked by. They did. It did. <laughs> I smell something. Yeah. And it won't get smelled. Yeah. <laughs> this is St. John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love have no man than this. Mm, greater love have no man than this. Let's see. That a man lay down his life for his friend. Um, and that's what Yahweh Shah did, man. His life was laid down, man, so that we may have remission uh, of sins. You know what I mean? Greater love, and, and what are we going? What are we out here doing? We're laying our life down for the sake of, of, of returning the favor for the Most High. You know what I mean? We out here pursuing Him in righteousness. That's we right. know that we we count the cost. It's gonna come a time where this devil gonna want our heads. That's right. That's that's a part of that's a part of this thing. Right. Go ahead, continue on. It reads on. Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you, mm -hmm. henceforth. I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But well, we do know what our Lord doeth. Go ahead. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, ha I have made known unto you. Yeah, man. So all the prophets, all the calamities that's happening in the earth, that's why we can go into them and tell you, hey, man, hey, we're getting close. Time is of the essence. That's why we can go into those things, man, and edify the people. And bring it out, man, and understand it. Because when the Lord was giving the men uh, these visions back then, man, they didn't fully understand, you know, what was. They didn't. They couldn't really see it. Because but well, we're living in these times, and we're seeing it come to pass. And so now it's like, oh, it's clear. So the Lord has made it known unto us everything that His Father is doing. This is Saint John chapter 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Uh -huh. And ordain you that you should go forth, so like you, that you should go and bring forth fruit. Yeah, man. So, Pookie can't, you can't just sit in and be like, oh, I like what they're doing. It seems like a cool fan. I'm going to go teach you. No, man, the Lord has to call you. The Lord has to call you to the room. No way. And that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Yeah, man. So, you can't choose the most high for yourself. So those that are forbearing, hey man, they're not meant to get it. That's the same, that's the same way when the uh Yahweh was talking to the people and his disciples came in and said, What? Well, why, well, why do you speak to them in parables, oh Lord? Mm -hmm. he said, because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. And to them it is not given. So there's the people that this thing is meant for, and there's the people that it's not. Lord will you get to be a part of that exclusive club. You know what I mean? Because the Lord deals with small numbers. I got a piece of Go ahead. This is Jeremiah yep. chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Yeah, man, because you're a spirit. Before your body, before your fleshly vessel, you're a spirit first. And the Lord created all the spirits, man. So before you were, you were in this earth, whatever, you know, Whenever time you came here, because you, we, we, nobody's new, we're all spirits and we've been here hundreds of times over, right? So look, the, if the Lord chose you to be a man of the Lord, that's what you're going to be. Ain't nowhere around it. 
then you're going to be there every time you come here. That's your lot. The same way with Jonah, man. Jonah thought he had a choice in whether he was going <laughs> to go deliver the word in Nineveh or not. That's right. He found out, he soon found out that he didn't. You know what I mean? So, you know, the same with the, the brothers out here that we teach. You. Some brothers, the Lord had us get in situations to where, hey, man, you knew that this, if I didn't do this, the Lord going to do something to me. So this is what you, everybody has a lot. Some people are meant to hear it. Some people are not. You can't put a round peg into a square hole. You know what I mean? So we understand when we come out here that ain't, ain't nobody really going to be listening. You might get one every blue moon. It reads on. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Done, man. And we're prophets unto the nations, man. We're, the word is being heard in every nation under heaven by way of the unicorn, man. And on top of that, you do got brothers out there in those way, way more countries. You got brothers in Germany. You got brothers uh, all down throughout South America. You got, I think you got a brother in the Philippines. Like we got brothers in all these different countries, man, bringing out the word. Like the scriptures say, man, the line is going out throughout all the earth. Let me go get that. So everybody's going to get the opportunity, man, to hear this truth. It's uh, Psalms 19. Now I'm going to start at 2. Day unto day utter speech. Night unto night shew of knowledge. There is no speech nor language. Where their voice is not heard. I don't speak Chinese. You know, I don't speak Russian. I don't speak Portuguese. Okay? There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is going out through all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. And them hath he set the tabernacle for the sun, man. How is that possible that our, our line and our words and this truth is going out throughout all the earth, man? By way of the internet. The Lord allow Esau to set that up for the purpose of his word being brought out to, unto all the nations. Man. And it's a beautiful thing. And, that, and that's another example of, you know, this devil thinks he's doing something for his own good, for his own agenda. And really, the Lord is ordering his steps so that his prophecies may come to pass. Because if people, if people gotta realize, man, there's really, a, there's really no opposition. There's opposition, but it's really not because the Lord controls both sides. You know what I mean? The Lord controlled the heart of Pharaoh. When Moses told him to let his people go, he hardened Pharaoh's heart so that Pharaoh wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? This really a get down and lay down situation because if you don't choose the most high, you're choosing to lose. But not to, to, to be against the most high is to choose death. You, know, you got a preset, brother? Yep, yep. I'm going to go turn my lights off right there. I see my lights on right there. know so while the brother you know turn off his car lights you so-called negroes latino and americans you need to get this word you know why you still can because we're coming into that time you know where the internet's going to be shut off you know and the prophets are not going to be out here in the highways and byways you know giving you the truth for the scriptures for too much longer yeah. you know so you so-called negroes latino americans need to get this word soon you know right now yeah. as quick as possible because we're coming to that time where it's going to be a famine of the word This is St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Yeah, man. So this thing has to be preached in all the world. So there's certain contingencies. Before, before this thing truly pops off, there's certain things that have to happen first. You know what I mean? This word has to be preached in all the world. The RFID chip has to be made mandatory. And the fact that it's on the scene, you know, lets you know how close that we are. We was talking about that in the car as well, man. Once that chip is made mandatory, man, like Elder Tahar said, we ain't gonna be in this society another 20 years. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Scrambling, trying to figure out how we gonna, you know, have the thing sufficient so we can survive. No, man, once the, the, the RFID chip is made mandatory, the family and the work gonna be happening at the same time. We're not gonna be out here teaching. So, you know, the Lord said what? You know, Matthew, the, I think the 24th chapter. But for the elect's sake, he's going to shorten the days. But read that again, brother. This is St. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached 
in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come yeah man so there's a certain order that we've been given so when people start throwing out dates and stuff you know they pull the bs you know what i mean so it, the lord has this voice has to go out throughout all the earth so um Everybody has to have the opportunity to hear this thing. Let me go to go to it. Romans. I think I got it. Yep. Okay. This is Romans chapter 10, verse. I'm gonna start at 10. Um, Ro Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For whosoever should call upon the name of Yahweh Bashem al Shai shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Yep. How are they going to call on who they not believe, man? We bring out that the Lord was a so called black man. We bring out the fact that he wasn't all love. We bring out the fact, you know, that he conducted himself in a manner that he was an austere man. He wasn't who they depict this person to be. He wasn't, uh, he didn't, he wasn't a, a streaky hair, uh, Edomite. Go ahead. It reads on. And how shall they believe in him, in him of whom they have not heard? You know what I mean? So, yeah. How are they going to believe if they haven't heard the true doctrine? If they haven't heard the gospel? If they haven't heard that the law wasn't done away with? If they haven't heard that they weren't, they're not supposed to be keeping the holidays of the heathen? Go ahead. And how shall they hear without a preacher? God, man. So you, you, go, you, got, you got to have somebody to break this thing down to. And the Lord is setting up those men. He's already set them up. And they've they been being diligent. You know what I mean? They, they didn't pop up for a season and disappear. You know, you got a lot of people that fell out the truth. They got ahead of themselves and fell out the truth. Just like that TV show. Uh, they said, where are they now? <laughs> where are they now? You know what I mean? They, they made a video and... A year, six months, you know, they, yeah, the Lord set up men that are going to be diligent and they're going to be here for the long haul. That's the easy way to tell who you're dealing with. You know what I mean? Our pastors and elders have been doing this thing diligently. They're in this for the long haul. They, they wasn't, they didn't take any breaks. Consistent, man. You know, go ahead. Verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Huh, man. How you, how you going to be in it for the long haul if the Lord ain't with you? That's simple as that. Romans, uh, go, go back to Romans uh, 3 and 4. You know what I mean? So there's some people that they're not going to get this thing. They're not going to want to hear it. Because it's not, it's, they're not, it's not chosen for them. They weren't, they're not supposed to get it. This is Romans chapter 3, verse 4. Uh, uh, start 3. Up. Yeah, Romans 3. Okay. Yeah, 3. This is Romans chapter 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Yeah, what if some people don't get this understanding? What if some people, they like, oh, I don't believe that. I love my Jeebus. <laughs> hey, man, so be it. Go ahead. Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? Does the fact that you don't believe or comprehend the prophecies that we're bringing out, is it going to stop it from happening? Is it going to stop any of these decrees from happening at the Most High set forth? Does it make the book untrue because these people don't believe? Let's see. The Most High forbid. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, let the Most High be true, but every man a liar. Yeah, man, so this is what we go by. We don't go by opinions or feelings of man. You know what I mean? And that's that's why we always bring out the scriptures first. That's why we speak with the authority that God gives us. You know what I mean? That's why when we bring out something, we back it up with the word. Because we're not going off with doctrines and men like they do in the churches. You know what I mean? Go to 1 Peter 4 and 11. We'll pass out here rambling on for an hour and a half and brought out two precepts. <laughs> they don't, you know what I mean? That, that ain't how the men of the Lord are supposed to operate. Go ahead. This is 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of the Most High. How did the, the oracles, how did the men of the Lord, how did the seers speak? Go ahead. 
It says, if any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which the Most High gives him. Yeah, and this is the ability. This is what the Most High gives him, man. The Spirit, the words. So if you're going to speak, you're going you're gonna to use the word. Not your own tongue, not your own thoughts, your own feelings, man. That's disrespectful to the Most High. And you got to answer for every idle word that you speak. So yeah, when people, a lot of times when people come up and they try to debate what they think, the first thing we, hey man, show us, if you, go, you got something to say, use the word. They can't never do it because they've been taught just to talk about how they feel, you know? So that, that, there's a clear cut difference between men that are, that are diligent and sincere in this thing and that are not. So for those who are just coming into the truth, you know, that there's a checklist that you should go by when you're trying to figure out, well, who, who, who has the truth? I'll let you know right now, Great Mills won't have the emphasis, right? But when you when you're trying to figure out and be persuaded in your own mind, like the scriptures say, you know, you gotta go about, okay, well, how did the men of the Lord in the Bible conduct themselves? They used the word to speak. They they weren't they weren't trying to sugarcoat anything. They were direct with people. They weren't out going out of there, they weren't toting guns. You know what I mean? It's it's really when you start going into it and breaking it down, it becomes clear to see. Because you know, you know you can't dibble and dabble with everybody. Because the Lord ain't give a, you know, great millstone a little bit of the truth. Gave I should be paid a little, another little bit, and then you got to go pick the right parts. That's confusion, man. The Lord doesn't operate in confusion. He doesn't operate in that spirit. So you know there's a group of men that have this whole truth that have been made manifest among you in all things. And the, and the, and the great millstone is a clear-cut choice, man. You know? Go ahead. It reads on. That the most high in all things may be glorified throughout Yahweh Shah Hamashiach yep. to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Yeah, man, because we're, we're like nine sports in school. We're just utensils. So this ain't about us. The Most High has to be glorified. That's why we got to use the word. We're, we're simply uh, pieces on the, on the chessboard. You know, doing our job. We got precept yeah. about something to mind. Yeah, we're simply pieces on the chessboard, man. So this ain't this ain't about you know that's why you don't see our apostles and elders with those super long ass names, Captain. Matt, you know, sound like a power range. They don't have those. They 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 just straight to the word, man. They don't got the crazy garments on. They straight to the word, man. Cause it's not about us. It's about edification. This is Proverbs chapter three, verse five. Trust in Yahweh by Shemawasha with all thy heart. And lean not unto thy own understanding. Uh, yeah, man, you, you know you don't lean on your own way because the mo go to Isaiah where it says the most uh, his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Mm -hmm. higher than, uh, yeah, his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And ways in, in your way. You know what I mean? To, to for you to, really when you lean on your own understanding, man, and you think you got it figured out, you're making yourself your own god. You're saying you know better than the most high knows, which is a proud thing to to, to do or say. And what, 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 what do we know about pride? Pride comes before your fall. Yep. You know what I mean? So to lean on your own understanding is a prideful thing. To, to be in disagreement with the Father is a prideful thing, man. Go ahead, brother. This is Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Huh. Neither are your ways my ways. Huh. Says Yahweh by Shema Shah. Yeah, man's ways. He'll, he'll, he'll say it's okay to sleep with it another man's life. She cool with it being shit. <laughs> Niggas right. think like that. Yeah. When that brings forth, you know, that just brings forth death and destruction and, and uh, controversy. It, it brings, it only brings forth wickedness. But uh, uh, a man of reason in his head that it's okay. You see what I'm saying? But that's an abomination in the scriptures. Go ahead. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your way. Leaps and bounds ahead. You understand? That, that, that's a big separation. Leaps and bounds ahead. So why why would why would this, the, the insects and the worms think they know better than you know the people? Why would we think we know better than the most high? People are worshiping the creature more than the uh, creator. Like it says in Romans the first chapter. Go ahead. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Going. For as the rain cometh down 
in the snow from the heaven and returneth not thither, yep. but water the earth and make it and make it bring forth bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Like the seasons come without fail, so are the Lord's words gonna come to pass without fail, man. So just like we read in Romans 3 and 3, so, uh, what if some did not believe? Is he gonna stop the most soft from doing what he's gonna do? Is he gonna stop the prophecies from coming to pass? No, man. So what should you be doing? You should be playing your part. You should be being that piece on the chessboard, man. That's, that's, this thing is really easy, man. All you gotta do is follow the instructions of the Most High to the best of your ability and keep keep your head down and just push. Just keep your head down and stay focused, man. Have Keep your eyes single. Let me go get that. Go ahead and read that again, brother, while I get the... Uh, Kyle. This is Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it should not return unto me void. And what's the mouthpiece of the Lord? The prophets. You know, starting with our apostles and other great millstone, down to brothers like ourselves. We are the mouthpiece of the Lord. All right, so this is uh, Luke, the 11th chapter. I'm going to start in the 33rd verse. I want, I could have got the one in Matthew, but I'm going to go with the one in Luke this time. This is uh, Luke 11 and 33. No man, we have lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, man. This is that. This is that light. This is that. This is that understanding. We're not sitting on this. We out here doing what the Most High told us to do. To tell the people to be repent, man. Lifting, lifting up our voice like a trumpet, like it says in Isaiah. No man, when he has lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when the, thine eye is single, thy whole body is also full of light. If you keep your eye single, if this is what you keep keeping precious in your life, then you, it's going to reflect on your whole being and how you carry yourself, how you conduct yourself in all things, man. It'll be on you. People will be able to be like, okay, this dude is serious. These, these, these men are serious about this, right? Verse 34 again from the top. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, that whole body is also full of light. But on the other end of the spectrum, what? But when thine eye is evil, thy body is also full of darkness. You know what I mean? And when you go to Matthew the, uh, the 24th chapter, it expounds on that a little bit more, man. How great is that darkness if somebody's eyes, you know, can uh, fill with uh, carnal things, things of the world. And that's, let me go get you. Let me find uh, those that don't speak according to this word. They oh, there's no light in the yeah. yeah, man, so look, that's why we hey, you got to judge man by the things. Yeah. When you talk about this truth, you got to judge Is he speaking according to the word? Does it match up with the scriptures? You know what I mean? This is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. God, man. So we come out here just like we're laying back in our first uh, Peter 4 and 11. You got to speak according to this word, man. Because the most high has to be glorified. You got, you got people that come out there and start bringing out these precepts and all these silly doctrines, man. And they're not bringing out any. They bring out maybe one or two precepts. And then they just start ramming. It's easy to discern, man. Well, for those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, it's easy to discern, man, who's full of shit and who's not. You gotta speak according to the, you gotta speak with the ability that God gave. And who, who out here in the world is speaking according to the word of the Most High? The prophets. The men out on the highways and byways, specifically the men of Great Millstone, man. Go ahead. <laughs> this is Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 and I will give you pastors according to my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding that's right 
And that pastor, that, you know, which is a spiritual God, you know, is starting with our apostle Elder Great Millstone, you know, down to brothers like ourselves. You know, um, Yahweh Bashamashah gave you so-called Negroes, Latino, and Americans teachers. Again, start with our apostle Elder Great Millstone, you know, to give you the understanding of these scriptures. You know, to, to let you know what these scriptures are actually going to be talking about in these last days. You see, yeah, the, um, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, they gave us the understanding about the missiles according to the scriptures. God. They gave us the understanding about um, reincarnation. You know, they gave us the understanding about the Gentiles, yeah. you know, and so forth and so on. So Yahweh Bashim al who the word ignorantly calls God and Jesus, they gave us, you know, on pastors, spiritual God, to feed us with the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of these scriptures. Yeah, but I know, I know this, this truth saved me, man. I was in a, uh, you know, my father had passed away. I was in a dark place. You know what I mean? And, you know, being in, getting the full understanding of how life and death works, how judgment works, you know, it, it comforted me. You know what I mean? This is the comfort. It truly it is. It, 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 it set me on the right path. Be like, hey, man, I need to get real serious about this word. Because it's the only way I'll be able to make it through in this life. You know what I mean? This, this is my whole purpose. This is everything. Without the most high, you, you have no value. You can't, you can't, you can't get your value from the world, or from carnality, or from things that Esau gives you. You know what I mean? Your, your only value comes from man. How well am I a pursuer of the Most High? That's the value of a man. How well does he pursue the things of the Most High? And outside of that, you know, all this other stuff is going to pass away. It's temporary. When you go to First Corinthians um, one and uh, nineteen. You got to stand against evil, man. That's what's going to give you your value. You know, I'm sorry I went up on the tangent there, but that came, that came to my mind when brother started speaking. Started 19. Yep. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Yeah, man. Being wise in the things of this world is not going to amount to anything with calamity. When, when, uh, when all the... Uh, then the Lord gets rolling, that degree, that piece of paper, the job status, the money in your bank account, none of that's going to be up to deliver. Go ahead. It says, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the, the prudent. Mm -hmm. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the, 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 the disputer of this world? Who are the disputers of this world? Who are speaking to, uh, against the unrighteous decrees? Who's speaking against the wicked at this time, man? The men of the Lord. And those men are going to be made like enough to find gold when things hit the fan, man. This is what gives you value. Continue on, brother. It says, For after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High. It pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching uh, to save them that believe. Yeah, man, we talked about, hey, man, we do look foolish out here, foolish out here. But this is the this is the avenue in which the Most High is going to save them that believe. Man. This is the avenue. Can you read that again, brother? Con, verse twenty-one. Yeah, last part. Last part. Con. This is First Corinthians chapter um, one, verse twenty-one. For after that. In the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High. It pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Yeah, man. So look, that's, this is the avenue of how the Most High is going to save them that, that believe. Not by like Instagram or you making rap songs or having Israelite concerts or going on cruises. No, the avenue... The arena that he gave us to edify the elect and to bring his people in and bid them to the marriage, if you can find that, and to bid people to the marriage, is us being out here on the highways and byways, putting the videos up on the unicorn so the line can go out throughout all the earth. You see how all these things are intertwined? You see how the men of the Lord are saying the same thing? You know? It's, yep. This is St. Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. So, I can't so, so yeah, man, there's, there's, there's a certain thing that gives a man value, and there's nothing that has to do with the world.
This is St. Matthew chapter 22, verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highway, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. Come, huh, we bid them to the marriage, man. Those, those people that the Lord has chosen, we're, being, we're the vessel that he's using. What? To say, hey, man, come on in. Because this thing is getting ready to pop off. But once, it gets, once it gets going, man, it's going to be at an accelerated rate. What, what do they call it? A, a slippery slope. You know what I mean? When things start to escalate really fast, that's what's going to happen. You know? So read that again, brother. Right. This is St. Matthew chapter 22, verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highway, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. That, that, that's that's what we're looking to do. That's what that's that's our purpose of being out here, man. To bid these people to the marriage, get their blood off our hands, and you know, Lord willing, we'll be fine, you know, and well doing with the most high when he comes back. Alright? Um Because uh, I talked about, you know, uh You know, your value is based off of um, things that you may achieve in this world. And that gain isn't necessarily godliness. You know what I mean? Because through the eyes of the people, they'll, uh, they'll look at it that way. Six. Yeah, yeah, right. This is Psalms chapter 138, verse 6. Though Yahweh by Shema was shy, be high, yet have he respect unto the lowly. Yeah, the Lord, the Lord is dealing with low men. You know what I mean? He's not dealing with the, you know, the guy in the billion, billion dollar suits. He's not dealing with the, the CEOs of these, these major banks. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's dealing with them on the left hand side. He's using them to bring forth wickedness in the earth so that they can be judged. But the Lord, is, when it comes to forth to him dealing with his men that are going to deliver the truth, it's going to be low men. It's like there were all the men in this field. We had some properties that were doing better than others financially, but at the end of the day, he deals with the low men. But people see us and they, and they, and they discredit us because we don't, we don't fit the bill of their perception of what a man the Lord is supposed to look like. We, we don't seem to have value to them. That's why we read it with Solomon in the 5th chapter. Everybody was like him. The guy we had sometimes in derision because we didn't fit the bill. Because they were looking with what? They were looking with their carnal eyes, not their spiritual eyes. Read that again, brother. This is Psalms chapter 138, verse 6. Though Yahweh by Shema was shy, be high, yet have he respect unto the lowly. But the proud he knoweth afar off. Yeah. The proud, he, hey. The proud he knoweth are far off, man. And what do we always say about pride? What do the scriptures say about pride, brother? Pride go before destruction. Yeah, pride go before destruction. We're going to Mark. We're going to Mark. Yeah, they start. Yep. Yeah. Start thirteen first. We got a couple more precepts. You know, now I got to get back to work. I'm not gonna be able to teach with the brothers on uh tomorrow, Saturday. So uh made sure that I came out here and, and done and, and did my reasonable service, like the scriptures say, before I have to, you know, be gone for work because this is what's most important in life, man. That, all this other stuff is is is, is lasting. Go ahead, brother. Right. This is St. Mark chapter eight, verse thirty-four. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself uh, and take up his cross and follow me. Yeah, deny yourself, man. You know what I mean? All, the I things that you yeah, think that like you got planned. Hey, man, that's just for the birds. This is what's first and foremost. You got to pursue you. Go ahead, go on. It says, For whosoever will save his life, Shall lose it. <laughs> yeah, man. So if, you, if, you, if you're looking to, to save your life or to be good on this side, if you can't see past your nose, <laughs> and what I mean by that 
is look, man, to, to you to be pursuing, you know, I mean, try to, to save yourself in this, on this side, or to be good on this side, you, you can't see the big picture. You can't see past your nose. The big picture is everlasting life, immortality, spiritual power, manipulation of the elements, being able to, you know, see your kids grow up, you know, learn all these beautiful things, be a rule alongside your howl side, the list goes on, man. Be at peace, you know what I mean? Not have to see your people sick and, and drugged out. See a woman in order, have a hubby happy, have, you know what I mean? Everything being a complete perfection. But if you're trying to get all that on this side, man, you can't see the big picture, you can't see past your nose. Read that again, brother. All right. This is St. Mark, chapter eight, verse 35. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake in the gospels, the same shall shall save it. None, man. That, this, this is how you receive salvation. This regarding yourself for the most high. Because look, in the, what did the most high, what did uh, Yahweh Shai do for us? He disregarded himself for his people. <laughs> right? That's right. Is that it that, brother? Yep. All right. Yeah, man, so look, I'm going to bring out, uh, I want to uh, go to uh, Matthew 11, chapter This is St. Matthew, chapter 11, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Yeah. Yeah, I was not self is meek and lowly in heart. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he really came riding, he came riding into Jerusalem on the on the dump. You know? Go ahead, brother. And you shall find rest unto your soul. This is how you find true rest. You're not, this isn't your rest on this side. I like it. <laughs> This isn't your rest. Look at this place, man. You, you can't be an Israelite and find rest on this side. No matter what level of success that you reach. Look at Bill Cosby. Look at Prince. Look at Michael. All these, you know what I mean? Did they find rest? Oh, man. Don't play yourself. <laughs> that's, what, that's what DJ Khaled said. Hey, no, don't play yourself. That's right. Don't play yourself being on this side thinking that you, you, you can find an escape. That you can escape the curses on this side when the Most High put them on you. You can't deliver yourself out of the Most High's hand. He gave you one avenue to find rest. You either gonna do that or you gonna be judged. All right? You got something you wanna bring out before we, you know, wrap it up? Yep, got one more. Okay. You know? I know, I know the brother y'all gonna be on fire tomorrow too. Man. I'm gonna be tuned in. You said this is not our rest, right? Yeah, yeah. This is Micah chapter 2, verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Uh, depart, man. Not, that's, that's saying, oh, go to Africa? <laughs> is that, did that say, oh, you got to go back to Israel right now? No, man, depart spiritually, man. Come out of her, my people. Come out of her ways. Empty your cup. That's, that's a big thing that you got to do when you come into this truth, man. You got to empty your cup. Put aside that stuff that you thought you knew and rebuild yourself up with the spiritual understanding. You got to be like a child and, and grow from there. So, all the, you know, your understanding of how things operate has to be put to the side when you come in. You have to empty your cup, you know? Because your cup is with everything that you learned in this place is with this. You have, to, you have to empty that cup out, man. Fill it up with the true understanding, the true wisdom. You know, when I came into this, into this, I, I, I got to see what true brotherhood looked like. I got to see what true respect looked like. I got to see, okay, this is how you supposed to treat, you know, uh, people that are over you, elders, with respect and reverence, man. This is truly how you become a man. This is truly how you become a, a person of the most high. This is Micah chapter 2 verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Yeah. This is 
is not your rest. That's what you're into. So you can't be on this side thinking you're going to deliver yourself out of the most high's hand. It ain't going to happen. No way, not a shot in hell. <laughs> All right? The only way you're going you're gonna to find rest is through the avenue that the most high gave you. And that's Zephaniah 2 and 3. Close out with that. Your brother doesn't have anything else that he wants to bring out. Oh, we'll just start at one. This is Zephaniah, chat door. Two. Verse one. Verse one. Yep. This is Zephaniah chapter two, verse one. Gather yourselves together. Yeah, gather together, O nation, not desire. Israel, Jerusalem, Jerusalem is a people who cause the place, right? Go ahead. Before the decree bring forth. That decree, man. Before the before this thing pops off. Before the doors to, to that ark closes. You know what I mean? It, it, it is a shut off time, whether you know it or not. It ain't, cause some people I know in the world, when they in the churches, a lot of guy, a lot of young people, they'll think, well, you know, when I get a little older, I, I'll get real involved with the word. Right now, I'm gonna do my thing. People think that way. With the most high, that's not how you gotta get down, man. You know, you, you gotta cleanse your way as a young man. When you hear it, you got, you got it. When you get called, you gotta hop into it right then. Go ahead, brother. This is Zephaniah chapter two, verse two. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as a shad, yeah. before the fierce anger of Yahweh by Shema was shy come upon you. Yeah, man, day of the Lord, the day pass as a shad, those missiles burning this place up. Go ahead, brother. Before the day of Yah, before the day of Yahweh by Shema was shy, anger come upon you. Yeah. So you're going to miss the point. So this is about to tell you the avenue in which you can find rest, in which you can find deliverance and salvation. Go ahead. Seek ye, Yahweh by Shema shot. All ye meek of the earth. Uh -huh. Meek, the same way your house was meek and lowly. Go ahead. Which have wrought his judgment. Yeah, Israel wrought the Lord's judgment. Which while we were sitting in the captivity after captivity after captivity. Go ahead. Seek righteousness. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. Okay. It may be, ye shall be hid. In the day of Yahweh by Shema Oshai's anger. Uh, man, that's how you're going to find rest and deliverance. Not over here on this side, man. I got, I'm, let's close out with Psalms 119. Because I talked about, you know, young people, man, you think you got time. Ain't no time. We're about to read how you cleanse your go ahead. We're about to read how you cleanse your way. How you find true rest. This is this is Psalms chapter 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. This is how you find rest. It's plain and simple. You know what I mean? You gotta be out, you gotta you gotta seek the heart of the most high. The same way David was seeking the, the man after the most high's own heart, man. That's how you gotta be. And you've been given, you've been given great examples. It's not like you don't know what it looks like. You've been giving our apostles and elders on down. You, been, you have brothers that are, that give you perfect examples, man. You just fall in line. You don't gotta do no new shit. <laughs> you, don't gotta do, you don't gotta be too deep. Be one deep. You know what I mean? You don't gotta do nothing like you've been given examples, man. Just fall in line. And play your part, man. Let the truth fall where they be. And that's how you'll find rest. Alright? You got anything you want to say, brother? Yeah, bro. All right. So, yeah. With that being said, man, we're going to give all praise to the Most High. Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahushah, Ba'ashim, Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors again to the apostles and the elders. And I want to say shalom to all the brothers who are pushing this truth in sincerity. All right? May the blessing of election be upon your house. Shalom. Shalom.